I wonder if somebody can make a rail for this, because that's really all that's missing. Yeah, that's a pump action uh, Delta Trooper, 100%. That like wasn't even remotely hard. No grinding, no nothing, just fits right on there. Welcome to Mod Potential, where we take a look at the blaster in front of us to see exactly what this blaster is capable of doing, usually with new ones, because, well, it's relatively unknown. I have not, I know uh, Buff Daddy did post the internals of this. I did not really take a look at them because I wanted to kind of save it for myself, but this blaster, the Delta Trooper, does appear to be pretty much a nerf tri-strike reshell in a sense. There are changes, but I wonder how it's going to do in terms of like, well, the plunger tube and then the bolt sled are gonna be the two main things here. I'm gonna guess these are completely retooled, but we can of course see it, what exactly it would be capable of, and I think that's important. So I'm gonna start disassembling this blaster by removing the slide first, because there's something I do wanna see and that's if this blaster can take any kind of aftermarket slide that currently exists. One hidden screw. Plunger lock. Let's see. Yes, but you still can't get that screw. So that's their new tactic to try to keep us out of things. That's actually really annoying though. This doesn't look to be able to be pried off or anything like that. It seems pretty well firmly planted there. Hmm. Maybe if I pull this back and then eat that apart a little bit, can I even do that? This is extremely annoying. There we go. There we go. And we're in. So, the plunger tube and the catch and everything is standard end strike size. The bolt sled is different. And is that screwed in? It is. Of course it is. So we'll have to remove that to get rid of the pump. And the spring is, well, pretty weak. That's not great. But again, we're talking retaliator stuff here. It does look like, yeah, it has much better slack take up than the retaliator, which is good. Because one of the things about modern retaliators is the triggers are just awful. And with that slam fire mech in here, there's a little bit of a difference. We can kind of see that is just set in there. It's just a wedge that drives that apart. That is very weird. That's an interesting design. I like this push button design a lot more, especially since it's ambidextrous. I think that's a good way going forward. The shell does split obviously where the blue and orange is, which is important for painting purposes. Let's take this out really quick so we can completely remove the slide. And I have a way to test how easily this thing will take a new slide. So we're going to put that back together for a moment after we kind of poke out the screws. 
There doesn't seem to be, some of the screws are much longer, but of course the screws that are longer go in the thicker parts of the shell. So just keep that in mind and you'll be totally good. All the other screws seem pretty short and standard. So we'll put that back together like so. It doesn't even like to go back together. It's actually fighting me a lot. It's a very sticky shell to take apart. Let's see here. Let's put that back like that. Nothing else seems to be good. Let's put this jam door back in there. Gonna take that out. Take that out. I don't need it for this next part. Yeah, because that's spring-loaded downwards. I am just going to remove that because that is really, really aggravating. And hopefully all that is is an unpriming button. I am going to remove it as well. See if those are required for operation. Because when you pull the blaster apart, it's spring-loaded, so there's almost no way for me to... Uh, get that back on there. Yeah, now it works perfectly fine. That is a really aggravating design, Hasbro, and I'm gonna wonder if that was like a reset mechanism or something. Cause that's a little annoying. I'm actually going to put the internals back in for a second to see if that piece was in fact required for any function. You'd think they'd just be locked, but I mean, I've seen dumber things. I think that still works fine. As far as I can tell, I guess I'll actually have to put the spring back in to truly test it, but that seemed like it's still, let's go of the catch, perfectly fine. Yeah, those are just locks. They're completely unnecessary for the function of the blaster. And we'll even, I'll put a dart through it really quick. That's another thing I probably should have tested. Oh! Yep, works fine. That's not required. Okay, so what I wanted to test here was I've got this kit from NF Strike. And I want to see if this kind of stuff will work. And I'm seeing some design choices already that are trying to prevent that. Let's see here. Let's do... There we go. There we go. All right. That you could probably test this kind of thing with. Dude. No way. think it's possible. It's going to be kind of awkward, but I think it's possible to fit that on there. What's the... Well, I am going to break this by putting these in there. I should be able to get them back out. Now, this bolt sled is much stronger, except for, oh, it's not hooked in the back. That might be an issue. Because the bolt sled, on like the retaliator and stuff, this piece is connected. On this, it's not. That might be the Achilles heel. I'm gonna try to get this thing pump action. I think that's the first important goal here. Oh, that is really stressing that bolt sled.
It's in there, though. Alright, let's get the other one in. Oh, that one went in there way easier. Huh. Yeah, that one got flexed, but that one went in surprisingly easily. And I wonder if I need to unscrew that in order to get that in there. Because it doesn't seem like this will fit. Oh, is that what's going to screw me? I wonder. I wonder! Let's see, I'm going to put this back in. Just like so. Or no, 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 that. Oh, it's just a fraction too short! And that's the longest ones they come with. Oh, if I had a screw, the same kind of screw, just slightly longer, this would totally work. I don't think it'll take that high of a spring load, but that is definitely a pump action. I can't believe that works. It's not super pretty and there's no way. All right, we got a variety of slightly longer screws. So I'm gonna see, these are metric. I'm gonna see how well these work. I wonder if somebody can make a rail for this because that's really all that's missing. Yeah, that's a pump action uh, Delta Trooper. 100%. That like wasn't even remotely hard. No grinding. No nothing. Just fits right on there. It's not catching. I am going to take out that spring and try it with a different one really quick. All right. That is a pump action Delta Trooper. So, I will break this down really quick because it is break down a bowl, but I will explain very quickly what I've done here. So I have improved the spring and I will take it out to see on the chronograph exactly how hard it's hitting, but to get this to work was not easy. It does want to work, at the same time doesn't want to work. So this is the Honey Badger kit that I got. I believe it was from Lytake. I'll have a link down in the description where you can get this one, but this barrel would technically work, except this piece is too far forward and it's just a hair off of being able to prime on this thing. It needs to go back a little bit further. So what I've done is I've used an original barrel from a retaliator, conveniently enough, and cut it ever so slightly so it can go back just a little bit more so this thing would uh, catch, because normally it just doesn't have enough room. It's I guess the prime is slightly longer than a stock retaliator. That's kind of what I'm seeing here. And the only reason this technically works is because uh, aluminum is flexible. It's not a perfect fit, but it does work. It does kind of bend upwards and that's close enough in my opinion. But yeah, you can see I have cut basically just this little section out, hollowed it and, you know, made sure that this had enough room to just go back just a little bit more. And that worked out perfectly. I did put an increased spring in here. I'm not sure which one, it's just a retaliator spring. I believe it was like the worker six kilogram spring and I didn't need to replace the catch spring at all. It's not slipping, I fired it a few dozen times. It can probably go higher, but that's good news. The catch spring and catch system is pretty robust and that also bodes well for the, well, bolt sled, which again is just the stock bolt sled. Everything else in this blaster is stock and that held up perfectly fine. 
So there's a lot to love when it comes to the Delta Trooper in terms of modification. This is one of the friendliest blasters I would say that I've modified yet as a stock blaster because most of the time you need to worry about increased catch springs and bolt sluts breaking and all this crazy stuff. And the Delta Trooper doesn't seem to have any of that. We'll be able to tell if there's any wear and tear. And of course there is with this on the side of the blaster. These rails have been torn up just a little bit from me goofing around trying to get this thing to work. But I don't... I, I'm actually wondering. I think the bolt sled and stuff will be perfectly fine because it's rather thick material. So I think we're totally clear on that mark. And I will show you really quickly how this thing goes apart and comes back together. So, yeah, that's gonna fall out. That's not a big deal. So, this piece is probably gonna be your first problem. This is, of course, the mag release. But if you put it in there right, it will kind of click into place underneath this tab right there. And then that should work perfectly fine. Trigger, very, very good trigger compared to the Retaliator. You can see it's got a lot of take up right here to make it much easier to depress, you know, without, you don't have to go all the way back to make it, it's just a little bit and it works perfectly fine. That's great. That makes it way better than Retaliator in my opinion. And there's way less screws inside the entire blaster just in general, which is nice because I hate screws that much. And otherwise everything is pretty easy to get with. I mean, even like the whole, here's the whole magazine thing. It's, it's the magazine release is one unit. Here's the other rod right there. It's like, it's really, really simple. I'm actually really impressed with what Hasbro has done with this blaster. I know I, I, a lot of people's comments are, you know, all oh, his things, garbage, blah, blah, blah. Why would I ever pick this up over retaliator? And that's fair criticism. I mean, why would you? you, you need to have some kind of reason. And to be perfectly honest at the moment, yeah, you're going to get a lot more out of your Rampage or Elite Alpha Trooper and stuff like that. But as time goes on, those blasters can be more and more difficult to get. And in terms of just comparing it, like even the bolt sled right here, I'm gonna take that out. There's a little notch right there for the whole mechanism. Oh, it's just so perfect. There, as time goes on, those blasters are gonna get more and more difficult to find. And there are things that this blaster does, like slam fire and all these other, uh, you know, different changes that do make a reason to possibly pick this up, a case to use this over the Retaliator. This has been so far without, because every single time I've tried to like do a spring upgrade and Retaliator and stuff, I need to have like uh, different, I'd have to have a catch spring and then the trigger would get garbage. And so far this is relatively painless. I'm I'm really impressed. And yes, it does have Sunfire. Will you use it? Maybe, maybe not, but it does have it. And in terms of like the Elite Alpha Trooper, I, <laughs> I've never had a good relationship with the Elite Alpha Trooper because the prime on it is essentially garbage in my opinion. And even my janky pump action grip on this has a smoother prime than a modified Elite Alpha Trooper. And you know, lest you forget the Elite Alpha Trooper is relatively difficult to get your hands on unless you buy the expensive Coles version and who knows how long that's going to be around. This thing, perfectly fine. And in terms of screws, like the long screws going where you think the long screws go. It's relatively straightforward. There is a lot to like about the mod potential of this blaster. Of course, I'm not the kind of person like, you know, Chris Cartaya who would make it shoot 400 FPS that has a brass breech and stuff like that. But from what I've seen and what I've experienced so far, it's pretty darn good. I'm, I'm quite impressed with how this blaster is withholding. It's just a matter of if you can bring it up to that higher NIC level performance with that bolt sled. And I think that's where things are gonna get a little trickier. I don't know if that design is superior or inferior to your more solid bolt sled. There's quite a bit of flex, but at the same time, does it need to have complete rigidity at the back as well as the front? Because the front is very, very tough. It's very thick plastic and it can take a lot of punishment. So it's hard for me to say that it needs to have more or less. I'm not quite sure. And I'm sure the answer to that will be apparent as more people get their hands on it. Those who like doing brass breaches and stuff, I personally hate them. And you might see this again really soon if I can 
get a friend who likes modding these a little bit more than me. And I can I even put a modded spring in there. This is the one that I put in. It's a tough spring. The original spring, I think I just accidentally threw it, is much, much looser than this. And I'm trying to think if there's, there's even more of a spring in here. You know what? I bet, uh, let's use... I don't think I'm going to use this for anything else. So let's take this Nerf Turf 6 kilogram and put that in here. And if this will take it, you know, without any kind of catch upgrade or anything, then I think we're golden. That's one of the original Australian Nerf Turf Springs. They sent me that a long time ago, and I really, really appreciated it. I had the, uh, the 10 kilogram spring somewhere, but I don't know what happened to it. I had plans to put it in a bullpup, and then I lost it. And hopefully I can find it at some point, because I really liked that spring. But as you can see, putting this thing together, relatively easy. You can always put the spring in last. And then with our pump action here, a little more difficult. I have to kind of bend the bars apart. And I need to put this just slightly like that. Let's put that on there. Pull that back. And then it's, it does line up, but it doesn't line up it wants to go a little bit lower, and of course this doesn't like that, and so it does work. The prime just isn't as smooth as you'd want it to be, but like you can see, it's it wants to go down. It's not quite, but since it's aluminum, you can push it up and get it into position. I, that's really the only problem with it. That and, you know, there's not proper spacers. I tried using the original spacers that came with this kit, and of course you can use them, but the issue becomes that it just chews up the path that the uh, the travel right here, you can see right here, it's all kind of chewed up, and that's from me using those original spacers. But it's really not that bad. There we go. Seems a little sticky now. Not quite sure why that is, but... And I, I really, really like that right there. It would be possible, of course, to use the original one if you just made some kind of rail on it. Like, if I wanted to cut off that, I could use the original barrel and still have that and have that mesh up perfectly. That's a little bit more than I want to dedicate to this blaster right now, and really all it needs is a rail up here, and this thing would look really sweet. I, I like it. I don't know why people are so aggressively hating the Delta Trooper. It is not a bad blaster at all. I am going to see what this is going to be. I did, again, we put a Nerf 6 kilogram Nerf Turf Spring in there. No catch up here whatsoever. Let's see what this thing is doing. I'm going to go grab the original Nerf darts that came with this blaster and run them through the chronograph and see exactly what we get. Let's see what this can do. 81. 86, 87, 84, 61, 79, 77, 67. Yeah. Some of those could be worn darts. Let me try it with some AccuFix and see what happens. 10 of the Ray Squad AccuFix. 62, 64. Ooh. What is 78? 76, 62, are we just having some, doesn't seem quite right, they are a heavier dart, but I put a heavier spring in here, alright, here in, here's some, not FVJs, what do you call it, bowberries, 99, error, error, 76, 75, I wonder if the bolt has something to do with this. Some of those are hitting the 80s, some of them aren't. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. I'm gonna do a range test and see if they're hitting farther than they used to. I guess the thing that's so easily forgotten is that I, uh, added a huge barrel on the end of it. So no wonder the performance is about the same after I mod it, which also explains why some of the darts come out 85, 90 and some don't. 
Yeah, that's about what it was shooting before. But now, of course, it's got pump action on it. So I have essentially created a stock Elite Alpha Trooper, a more expensive stock Elite Alpha Trooper. But the potential is still there. Hmm. I don't know. Until I get like a brass breech and stuff on this, that's about how it's going to perform. And that makes sense to me. Hmm. I like it. That's me. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below, because I'm curious. Uh, maybe I wasted a bunch of time, but hey, it's done. Sort of. Until it gets a brass breech. It's definitely going to need one. Anyway, I'm Walcom. Thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one.